let's now turn our attention to really appreciating how systematic and random error affect the distribution of a set of measurements and how we can experimentally recognize systematic and random errors both by being attentive in the laboratory and understanding how data can tell us when systematic and random errors are present. This is a really important skill to develop as a scientist. And while recognizing and appreciating the nuances of errors is not something you can develop overnight, I want to give you in this video series a good foundation for developing your error analysis skills. So to start off, let's begin with systematic error. As we mentioned in the last video, systematic error boils down to inaccuracy. Systematic error creates or causes inaccuracies in measured data. And if we imagine a distribution that's centered on the true value, which I'm kind of indicating here with a red dotted line, what systematic error does to this distribution is it causes a shift in all of the values away from that true value. And the distance between the mean of the data set that's affected by the error and the true value is captured by the percent error metric. Something to notice here that's really important is that the precision is unaffected. So the width of the distribution, at least the way I've tried to draw it here, is unaffected by the presence of systematic error. So you can imagine that all of the data points are affected systematically. That's how I tend to remember systematic error. Now what does systematic error actually look like experimentally? Well, it all boils down to the idea, in my mind, of miscalibration. Miscalibration is the problem. And there's a disconnect, really, between the true value, or at least what we think the true value is, and the measured values. So before we talk about what miscalibration is, let's deal specifically with what calibration is in the first place. The basic idea of any sort of calibration procedure is that we have a set of true values, values that by some other means we know what they should be, and we use an instrument or a method to obtain measured values, and we compare the measured values to the true values and adjust the instrument or the method essentially so that the slope of the resulting line is 1, in other words, so that the measured values equal the true values. When miscalibration happens, this process goes wrong somewhere. One of the most common things that can happen is that our true values are, for some reason, shifted. Maybe our samples have decomposed. Maybe someone has nefariously come into the lab and spiked our samples to cause the true values to be off. What this will do is it will essentially mess up our calibration curve in a number of possible ways. So on the one hand, the slope could be wrong. So in other words, as we increment the true value, the increment that we see in the measured values is not correct. The slope could be fine, but all of the values could be shifted upward or downward. In this case, I've drawn them shifted upward. And in this case, all of our measured values are going to be larger, systematically larger, in fact, than the true values will be. Something else that can happen that's particularly problematic and that may seem a little bit ridiculous to you at first glance is the instrument can actually be calibrated in reverse so that when the true value increases, the measured value actually decreases. This does happen in some cases if the experimenter is not paying attention. But that's pretty easy to mitigate, as are a lot of these errors, if you have an appreciation for them when you're coming into the laboratory. So that's the basic idea of miscalibration. There's some disconnect between the true value and the measured value. And that can come from either side, and that's worth keeping in mind. The problem could be with the true values. We may not be dealing with samples that really are characterized by the true values that we think they are. Very often the problem is with the measured values on the other side. Somehow our method is incorrect, our method is not applying an idea properly, or our instrument is not working properly, or something along those lines. You'll want to weigh these two as you come to think about how a systematic error is caused. Is it something, is it a problem with the true values? Do you have reason to mistrust the true values? Or do you have more reason to mistrust your own method or instrument? 
Let's look now at a couple of examples of how miscalibration can come into play in chemistry experiments. So a very common and typically not too big of a problem uh, in chemistry experiments, but one that does affect measurements, is imperfections in glassware. So if we, you imagine we have a graduated cylinder, and let's say this graduated cylinder is old and a little bit worn, and it's got a crack or an opening in the bottom of it that allows liquid in. Even if the markings on the graduated cylinder are perfectly accurate, that extra additional space is going to allow liquid to come in. And so the volume that we measure using the markings is going to be smaller, systematically smaller, than the true volume. So if we imagine here's the true calibration curve, all of our measured volumes are going to end up lower than the true volumes. So our calibration curve is going to be shifted, and this is a classic example of miscalibration. So this is what we might call an imperfection in the glassware, and it's a very common source of systematic errors in chemical reactions and things of that nature. Another example that's quite a bit more ridiculous, but one that beautifully illustrates systematic error, is the idea of a balance. When we use a balance, we have to use something to contain the solid, right? Typically this is a weigh boat or weigh paper or something like that. And the idea when you use a weigh boat is to, of course, zero out the measurement before you start adding solid in. But if you don't do that, let's say the, the weigh boat weighs four grams or something like that, then when you add solid in, all of your measured values are going to be shifted upwards by four grams. 